Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another edition of Monday Motivation with Bukola. And our guest this morning is Elizabeth Corey. She's the founder of Beating Trauma. She'll be joining us in a minute to talk about how she helps other people recover from trauma and we will hear more from her this morning so while we are waiting for her i'm going to be um, sharing a quote i found about trauma for you So this quote is from Google Reads. It reads, just like there is always time for pain, there is always time for healing by Jennifer Brown. Hate list. Hmm. I don't know what that is. You know, I kind of like how just there is always time for pain there is always time for healing. And which is true, we do go through pain and trauma can be very painful, regardless of what kind of trauma it can be. Trauma is something that is very painful to anybody. And you know also, even though it's painful, there is also the time for healing. Hey, we have Elizabeth on board. Good morning, Elizabeth. I see Elizabeth. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Can you see me? No, I can't see you. One sec. Let's see if I can okay. get that. Thanks. How about now? I can't see you. Nice. Okay, I can see you now. Let Great. Me... Yes, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good too. Good. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. If you are just joining us for the first time, this is Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, money, business, beauty, entertainment, and advocacy. And this morning we have Elizabeth Corey in the house. She is going to be talking to us about trauma and how she helps people who have gone through trauma especially people who have gone through trauma during childhood and how to help them navigate life again and recover so i won't take it um away from elizabeth and we allow elizabeth to give us more details about this and just before you came on elizabeth i was sharing um a quote that i found online and i thought that that quote was kind of um inspirational it talks about trauma it's kind of a trauma quote where it talks about pain and i would like you to comment to that but no no i just want to read it first so it says where is the quote oh my goodness i hope i didn't lose it i hope i hope i didn't lose it because it talks about, you know, um, it talks about pain. It talks about, you know, just like there is time, there is time uh, for pain. There is also time for healing. Yeah. yeah. And 
we all go through, you know, every, actually every person who has gone through trauma goes through a kind of pain, yes. I believe. Yes. And there is always that time too for healing. So this person said, just, and it's on googlereads.com, just like there is always time for pain, there is always time for healing by Jennifer Brown from Hate List. <laughs> I'm like, Hate List, that's, <laughs> that's something to check out. So, <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, um, trauma, trauma, trauma is something sometimes that we don't talk enough about. And I guess because it's of the sensitivity of the issue and trauma is not something that we can really place our hands on in terms of physical you know for example when you are at the therapist and you are being checked they're not looking at um they're not like checking your temperature <laughs> to see if you need or not. it's kind of a whole different level and people kind of respond to trauma differently and we would really like to hear from you how you know you who is someone who has gone through trauma yourself because of your experience and have brought that experiential value to helping others recover i found that very inspiring but before we go into the details we want to know who elizabeth is so can you tell us briefly who Elizabeth Corey is? Who am I? Oh, wow. Great question. Um, well, you know, I think I've been on a bit of a journey to figure out who I am, especially in the last 10 years. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up in difficult circumstances. I did go through families, uh, sex abuse and trafficking, and it was it was not a good childhood at all. And um, I got into to, uh, adulthood and felt completely lost. And I think when you ask the question, who are you? That's such an important question for survivors because most of the time we don't have any idea, right? I mean, we're so lost because we never had the opportunity to create our own identity. We were always meeting the needs of everybody else. And so, for years and years, I felt completely like I had no idea who I was. I had, I had no idea what I wanted. Um, I, and so the question of who, who am I is such a fascinating one. And, and I think we, we all do struggle with that as survivors. I personally now believe that the, the things that define who I am are in regards to what I do today versus who I have been in the past and the experiences that I had in the past. So for example, for me, I consider myself first and foremost a parent of two young children and they are my life and the reason why I probably recovered at all. <laughs> um, I, I also consider myself to be um, a healer in that I am bringing to the world a way of, of healing trauma from the past. Um, and I also consider myself to be, um, let's see, what, what, wait, I, mean, I think we use the word a lot, Bukala, we use the word a lot, advocate, right? And I think, I think in, in my world, I'm an advocate for those who are still trying to find their way out of the the past out of that those tremendously traumatic experiences of the past and you know i consider myself an advocate for them um so that would be if i had to say who am i that would be how i would describe myself today <laughs> oh you know even like saying this is so powerful because I was taking notes, you know, saying um, you had no idea who you were, and it's such an important question to ask survivors. And also, you know, I was happy to hear that you're a parent of two young children and they 
they kind of help you to be who you are today too. And being a healer and helping others recover from their past is such a, a strong virtue to have as a person and know that you have these virtues because it's true sometimes people don't even know what they've got inside of them they don't know who they are and would you say that knowing who you are helps you with helping others find who they are in them yes actually i often tell survivors can you hear me okay go ahead okay yes i can hear you Okay, I, I often tell survivors that um, in order for us to help others, because, you know, so, so many of us want to help others. Like that, that's one of the first things everybody wants to do as a survivor who has become public, right, is to help others. But what I often tell yeah. them is we have to start by figuring out who we are and what we want to deliver to the world and and that actually requires our own our own healing we can't heal others until we have healed ourselves okay that's a mandatory it won't work otherwise and so i think that it is critical that i know who i am and i have done my own healing before i can get out there and begin the process of, of, of helping other people as well Wow, we can't heal others until we have healed ourselves. And my question now would be for somebody who has gone through trauma, you know, how do you get to that healing place or how do you know whether you are ready or not? <laughs> that's a that's a very good question. <laughs> you know, I I think that I mean in, in many times I have thought I was ready for something and then i've kind of because i have a tendency to jump out of the starting gate very quickly yes i, I think Bukala, you know about that and so i i will i'll have to i'll start and then i'll have to go oh wait and i'll have to back up a little bit and like kind of catch my breath and really ground myself to go was i really ready for that i think when it comes to trauma we have so many different parts of us who are sending us messages and a lot of those messages are based on our trauma so I think that the first thing that we have to do when we start our journey is to look at how are we responding to the world are we responding to the world from our trauma so from this really kind of anxious place where we can't really trust others others where we can't really trust the world um, if if we're getting messages like that internally that things aren't right in the world that we are in danger that we can't trust others um, that we may still be living in a traumatic place because one of the things about trauma is, is that it continues we, we get stuck in the trauma that's what PTSD is it's it's getting stuck in the trauma. And so we have these parts of us, these inner parts, which is how I write um, and on my blog about parts. And so we have these inner parts and they're stuck. They're stuck in the past. They're stuck in their trauma. And so it's our job to recognize that we're getting these messages from these parts who are stuck in the past. And that those are, that it is our responsibility then to heal those parts. Okay. And, and so I think a lot of it has to do with the messages we're receiving internally as to whether or not we're ready to heal others. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Before we go on, if you are just joining us, I saw somebody came in. Thank you. Our viewers out there for joining live, especially those of you that come on live. Thank you so much. Again, this is Monday Motivation with Bukola. It's a show about inspiration, women empowerment, beauty, money, business, entertainment, culture, and advocacy. And today we have Elizabeth Curry, the founder of Beating Trauma, talking to us about how she's helping people recover from trauma. 
And, you know, back to Elizabeth, you talked about, um, what did you even just talk about? About getting stuck. Yeah, the word getting stuck. So would you, what about triggers? What does triggers have anything in common with getting stuck or can triggers help you or bring you back to getting stuck? Because, you well, know, for trusting people, sometimes it's people's action that will make you to trust or not to trust. And yes. also based on what you've experienced in the past, that could make somebody's action to help you trust them or not to trust them. And also this issue of triggers, does that have anything in correlation with, um, you know, getting stuck? Yes. Yes. And so I have a unique perspective on triggers. So I'll start with triggers. Um, you know, I actually see triggers as a positive thing, believe it or not. I know so nobody else agrees with me, uh, but I, I see them as a good thing. And there's a, the reason why I'm going to explain myself. Okay. The reason why I think that triggers are a good thing is because when we become, at, when our trauma is at, activated, which is what happens when we're triggered. Our trauma is being activated, okay? We are getting messages from our inner parts that we have more healing to do, okay? And I'm not saying we ever completely heal every single trigger, but when we get those, when those triggers happen, we are getting messages from our traumatized inner parts saying, hey, I'm uncomfortable i'm feeling like something that's happening now is resembling the past okay and i want to respond from the trauma place okay so then it's our, our job as a from a place of awareness of learning that that's what a trigger is to then say to ourselves those inner parts of us that you know what i hear you i, I know you're scared but this isn't the past this isn't the past, and we can respond differently to this. We can respond from a non-trauma place. It's no longer life and death that somebody disagrees with us. It's no longer life and death that um, we, uh, let's see, what's another good example? That we, let's say, we hurt ourselves. Like, just even just a small uh, a scrape or a cut can be triggering. But the, all of these things are no longer life or death. For example, in my situation, parenting. Parenting always creates these trigger responses for me where my inner parts feel like they are in a life or death situation. My son gets mad, I get triggered. My daughter starts to cry, I get triggered. But none of those things are life and death. But my trauma parts are still thinking, oh goodness, oh goodness, there's emotion, something bad is going to happen, right? And the reality is it isn't, it isn't, nothing bad is going to happen, but I have to kind of be aware of my triggers, know that it's my inner parts communicating to me and say, hey, you know what, I don't, we don't have to respond like that this time. We don't have to respond from that place of fear. We can, we can kind of calm down, take some deep breaths and say, it's different now. But that's a process, and that takes a lot of time to get to a place where we can re respond to a trigger that way. But it is a communication. It is communicating to us that we have a part that's scared. So that's really what a trigger is in, in my mind. So it doesn't mean we can't help people if we're triggered or that if we get triggered. It, it just means that we have to be aware of our triggers we have to know where they're coming from and why they're coming so that we can choose to not respond from that fear that we have so wow that is really a good point to know to be aware of yes. the trigger and know that okay this is trigger and we don't have to respond in a positive way we can start like redirecting our emotions Yes. In the positive way. Wow. I learned something today. Okay. So um, as we go on, I would like to ask you, because I know that you've been able to build an empire of 
followers on Facebook of over 30,000 years. And I do follow your blog. I do read your blog. And I, I see the good work you are doing out there. So can you tell us a little bit more about beating trauma? How you started beating trauma and the people that you help? Yeah. Yes. Um, so my beating trauma was started uh, basically because I decided to start a blog. Okay. And when I started writing, I was thinking, oh, well, I'm really just writing for me. I'm writing to help myself. I want to heal myself by using my voice, which is a huge thing for most survivors. We're all trying to figure out how to get our, our voices back. Right. And so this was my way of doing that was through the blog blog. So beating trauma started with just a blog entry. And the first blog entry was so terrifying that I was literally paranoid for like a month. Uh, it was so scary. And so, but over time, I got to this place of feeling very comfortable with writing about my experiences in healing. And so I started to gain some followers and people were saying, oh my gosh, when you write, it's like you're you're talking to me or you're talking from me. It's like I'm writing those blogs. And I started to discover that people were really relating to what I had to say. And so I began to, I started my Facebook page and I began to post some of my blogs and people were really excited about what I had to say and the way that I was saying it. And so I decided, hey, you know, this may be the direction for me. You know, there may be something here that I need to explore in how I can help others and how I can heal others. So I started my my first venture into the world of, of running my own business was to begin a coaching program. So as, as a life coach, for trauma survivors, which is really what I am today, I, um, I, I help them to do the kind of work that I have done, which is to access their inner parts and to be, use awareness to help them when they are triggered and begin to bring their systems back into this kind of a state of like calm uh, through working with their inner parts, which is what I have essentially done. So I, I do mainly one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, at, with survivors of trauma. These could be survivors of any kind of complex trauma, from trafficking to child abuse to emotional abuse and neglect. It doesn't have to be physical or sexual in nature. It can be almost any kind of tra trauma at all. Um, since I started my coaching program, I have also started, um, done a few other things. I have a product that helps parents who have been through trauma to help them understand the habits that they may be forming with their children that aren't necessarily abusive, but may not be the best parenting habits to have. And so I, I have a workshop about that. Um, I also have a Facebook group now that I run. It's an eight week Facebook group. And, and we do uh, daily steps towards building our awareness about our inner conversation and our parts and our, our triggers. And so I'm actually running one of those Facebook groups right now. We have two more weeks and so, and then we'll be finishing up and I'll start another one in September. So um, I'm doing all of these things right now. I am also writing a book, but it's, it's not ready yet. <laughs> wow, I am I'm working on that. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that earlier that you need to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you've done that. You're an expert at that already, but Ooh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elena. I'm Elena. Oh, you know, we don't have a lot uh, of time right now, but I want to make um, an announcement. So, for our viewers, and it's for today only. There is this book, you can get a free copy today. It's called Elevate Your Life with the Power of Positive Perception by Inkechi Ajairo. It's a new book that is available on Amazon. And she's giving free copies away today. So you can download it for free because it's a birthday. So I would like to say <laughs> happy birthday to Inkechi. And this book she's using to empower girls. 
So oh. if you want to join to empower girls and women out there, you can go on Amazon today and download the free copy of Elevate Your Life with the Power of Positive Perception by Inkechi Ajairo. So I'm um, back to Monday Motivation with Bukola. And if you are joining us for the first time, this is Monday Motivation with Bukola. It comes on at 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Yes, I've asked myself that question and people have asked me, are you crazy? Why are you doing the show at 5.30 a.m. in the morning? But that's the time that works right now. <laughs> For somebody like me, <laughs> that's just the time that I could use. Before I started the day, I thought, you know, to bring you guys inspirational messages like we are having this morning with elizabeth curry because trauma is something that we deal with sometimes even you know we have some cultures that do not know how to respond to trauma what would you say to encourage those kind of people who don't know how to respond to trauma because it's not something that is widely acceptable in the culture right and you know what i think that a lot of the reason why trauma is not accepted in in cultures and societies in general is because people are really really busy in validating their own trauma trying to keep their own trauma from showing up in their daily lives because let's face it Bukula, almost all of us are suffering from some kind of trauma what you know like i said it doesn't have to to be physical or sexual it doesn't have to be trafficking it can be emotional but we are all suffering from some kind of trauma and we are all busy trying to ignore it and why are we trying to ignore it because it's painful and we want to keep pushing it away and pushing it away and ignoring it and avoiding it because we don't want to face our pain because we're honestly some of our inner parts are afraid it might kill us i mean really it's that it's that intense and so we pretend it's not there and we put on this mask and we walk through our lives every day pretending that we're not in pain and then when somebody else brings up their own pain we have to we have to push that away too we have to say no no no, no. there's you know we don't want to talk about that trauma. We don't want to talk about that because we're busy invalidating ourselves. So we can't possibly validate trauma in somebody else. And so as a society and culture, we have to learn how to accept the fact that human beings are in pain and they need to heal. And that includes each of us and that includes everybody else who is trying to help with trauma today. So um, if we can all all begin healing ourselves we can really start looking at our pain and how it drives us and how it drives us to avoid the pain of others we will in general find that we're healing more as a society from everything that we're unfortunately passing down to our children until we stop doing it <laughs> so wow <laughs> Yes, and uh, we have like two minutes more. But before we go, I do know that you work with women all over the world. So can you just give us a little bit about that and your last words to encourage women who are experiencing trauma and how to be um, inspired to live beyond trauma? Well, I mean, I think that one of the ways that I inspire people most is by showing them that in my own life, I was able to recover, to heal and, and take back my life and live a much better life. And people need to understand that we don't have to stay in this anxiety and this depression all, all the time. We can actually heal that and, and begin to live a very different life. But we have to to go through that pain we have to feel it unfortunately we can't avoid it the avoiding is what creates the anxiety and the depression and yes this far you mentioned that i work with women all over the world and, and men actually and that is true i do work with women and men all over the world because one thing i have found is that we all have trauma and we 
all, believe it or not, no matter what our culture, we heal it the same way. We heal it ex exactly the same way. We all have inner parts. We all, all have triggers. And it the same, and what I have found is that the same process will work to heal us no matter how we were brought up and no matter what culture we live in. Um, and I've worked with people in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, and all over the United States and Canada and have found that, that really this, we all have had such similar experiences and we can heal in similar ways. So this is a universal experience. It's, it's not specific to, to any one culture at all. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Our time is up. And thank you again for those of you who joined us this morning. It's Monday Motivation with Bukola. And I would really like to thank our guest, Elizabeth Corey, the founder of Beating Trauma. So please go and check her out at beatingtrauma.com. She's also on Facebook as Beating Trauma. You know, she's giving us a lot of value this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really, really appreciate that. Thanks. And do have a nice day. <laughs> bye -bye. You too. Thanks. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So see you all next Monday. Bye for now. <laughs>